Welcome to the NTD Technical Corner. Today we have a real education in bar feeding, automation, technology, and we're going to be breaking down barriers to entry within our industry in regards to automating fixed ed lathes. Now I'm with the maestro of bar feeders and you'll understand why I'm calling him the maestro <laughs> shortly, my very good friend, Clive Lennon. Welcome back to the NTD studio, Clive. Thank you, Gio. Pleasure to be here. Clive, great to see you again. Brilliant to have you back. Now. We're going to be discussing some really important subjects in this particular technical corner and we're going to be covering three of your most popular full length bar feeders, the Elite, the Boss and the Maestro. Clive, can you firstly tell our audience about these three bar feeders? Sure. The, we've picked these three because they're the most popular in the UK. So they, and they also cover from sliding head through to fixed head. So the Elite come in two models, one 12, two to 20, the Boss comes 338, 552 and the Maestro up to 80 or 100 mil. So the Elite covers sliding head, the Boss covers both sliding and fix, and the Maestro goes to fix. So sliding head machines, let's just start with the sliding head uh, Elite bar feeder. You know, in my opinion, sliding head machines are money printing machines, and you'd never see a short bar feeder on a sliding head. Tell us about the technological advancements in the Elite. So the Elite, when you consider you going down to 0.8 material, which is the smallest bar they do is, is standard, you have to have some kind of new technology like this rack system so for the small bars you use a step-by-step -step, or for the longer bars you go to a standard rack but they all have fast technology and synchronization built in so synchronization is a big part you know that the bar feeder has got to be synchronized with the speed of the sliding head or else you'll effectively be holding it back you know explain synchronization okay synchronization is it's a simple so when the bar feed the lathe asks the bar feed to feed, the collet has to open and close. As soon as that collet closes, the synchronization has to be clamped to the pusher. So therefore, when the headstock moves at a rapid speed, the pusher follows. So it's a really important feature, uh, and yeah. speed is extremely important, and that really leads us nicely onto the boss. Can you tell us about the latest technology um, that the boss has to offer? Yeah, so over the years, I could keep developing and developing, and they've come up with this super fast technology now. Super fast technology basically takes in the feeding time, and bar change time. So bar change time is now down to 18 seconds. Feeding time on sliding heads used to be traditionally, I used to have to add at least half or one second either side of your collar open, collar close. Now we're down to 0.1. So your cycle time or your downtime on your machine is almost eliminated. And that's, that's absolutely massive, Clive. Now, with the, with the Boss, you mentioned that it's a hybrid between the sliding head and the fixed head lathes. Now yep. it'll go up to 38 mil, I believe. Um, when you're looking to bar feed larger bars for, for the larger bar capacity machine tools, what solutions do you have to offer? So the latest development is the Maestro. So I am have recognized as they do machine developments, what they need to do. You can't inhibit a machine tool at all. That's why it's called the Maestro No Limits. And so up to 80 or even 100 mil now, what we're, the aim is with this bar feeder is to keep up with the machine tool speeds and also reduce setup times. Clive, why wouldn't you? So why wouldn't you put a long bar feeder on a fixed head lathe? There's no reason. The, on, the only reason is space. If you've got a small factory, then that's the time for a short bar feeder. Apart from that, you either go 2.1 or full length. When you're introducing this automated solution on a fixed head lathe, can you also achieve unman, unmanned running that you couldn't achieve? if you add a short bar feeder on there? It's massive. The, the, the difference between a full length and a short bar feeder is a difference between a few hours and a weekend. If you manage it correctly, especially with the additional magazine capacities on the bar feeder, there is no limit to what you can do as unmanned. And of course you have not only the saving on the full length with remnants and bar change times, you also have saving on your labor costs. So labor cost is massive though, Clive, because if you can't get that full unmanned running using a short bar feeder, on a fixed head lathe, but you can with a long bar feeder effectively, you know, using the same philosophy as what you can see on a, on a sliding head machine, whether it be a mill turn machine, you know, you, you can effectively run 24 seven without a man. So instantaneously, I can see a return of investment just in labor costs because you're running 24 yeah. seven. And this is a big point really that we want to make in this, in this technical corner, Clive, because it's something that really, I think is a barrier to entry uh, that really needs breaking down. Yeah. Now, in regards to the technology with the Maestro, you mentioned changing bars. 
Tell us about the, 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 the technology in regards to different bar diameters okay. and how you can change from one to another. Right, so this one, is even, they've made it even simpler, as you see on this control here. One button will bring back, bring the pusher up. You take the gripper collar off, put another gripper collar on, 30 seconds. You push your bar diameter into there, it adjusts your bar rack for you, it's finished. The abacus bushing, which is their patented device, comes in three sections. The sections go down and clamp on the bar, in, and they are diagonal, so they clamp on four areas of the bar. So the, the development they have and the experience they have from the 1960s is all coming along with these new bar feeders. And so they realize at what point you can clamp the bar to stop any vibration. So the whole idea of a bar feeder is to eliminate vibration. That's its main purpose and to feed the machine. It eliminates vibration, but I'm assuming it's saving setup time too. Oh, massive. It's, it's down to a minute now on an 80 mil bar feeder. So you could be feeding um, an 100 bar capacity fixed dead lathe or mill turn. And basically you're eliminating setup time. You can be running 24 seven unmanned. Really Clive, I'm absolutely sold. Now let's move on to, you, you mentioned vibration. Let's move on to the, the build of the, 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 the bar feeder because this is very important. If you were loading 100 mil diameter bar at three meter length, it's going to be heavy. Oh, it's massively heavy. So the whole range of IAMCA started with the bosses. They called them the HD ranges. And so that means the main beam of your bar feeder and the rigidity of your legs are the two main features to give you that rigidity of that kind of bar. I mean, you can't imagine the weight and the, the forces behind a 100 mil, three meter length bar running. So very important important feature is the build of the machine. Oh, yeah, the now, how do you load the bars into the machine? Because obviously they are, as we've mentioned, very yeah, heavy. Yeah, I mean, health and safety now and ergonomics are, are in every factory. You can't, you can't ignore that. So I am going to give you two options, really. One is a, a rack system, which you can load with a trolley or a forklift. And the other is a, a, a bundle, which you can put two and a half ton in. Now that can be done with an overhead crane or a forklift. And you, you'll see on the video, there's an open access bundle now where you just lay the, lay the, the uh, belts down, push a trolley in, put the belts back on, it's finished. Clive, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. There's also some really nice features, Industry 4.0 ready, the Siemens control, the simplicity of bro programming and so much more that unfortunately yeah. we can't discuss because we're running out of time. But Clive, you guys, First MTA and IMC have doing, been doing a fabulous job for many years now, breaking down the barriers to entry and educating our industry in regards to the reasons why and the return of investments on why you should put a long bar feeder on a fixed dead lathe. And we hope that this technical corner with Clive has been very educational and has been thought provoking. Clive, thank you very much for joining us again at the MTD studio. Pleasure, Gio.